This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's New Product Rundown features GWH's SU-35, Mobius's USS Franklin, Tamiya's Wespa, and Hobby Zone's Workbench Modules. New Product Rundown, brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. By HobbyCo, distributors of fine model kits from Italy, and by Cult TV Man Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits, decals, masks, and more. Welcome, I'm Elizabeth Nash, here with Aaron Skinner for another episode of the New Product Rundown. Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show to delight and amaze you with a look inside some of the latest kits. And the first of today's delights is GWH's 135th scale Sequoia SU-35S. This is the ultimate version of the flanker with thrust vectoring for maneuverability, a stealthy airframe, and improved targeting. The multi-role fighter entered Russian Air Force service in 2014. GWH has earned a reputation for beautifully molded and engineered kits. And the SU-35S looks to follow from there. The surface detail on the big upper body section combines fine recessed panel lines, slightly heavier lines for inspection hatches, and several sizes of rivets. The majority of the airframe is split with the halves incorporating the wings. The lower section fits into the upper, leaving the leading and trailing edges unsullied by joins. The nose cone is a single part. The vertical stabilizers are engineered in the same way with thin leading and trailing edges and separate one-piece rudders. The horizontal stabilizers pop into the airframe and should be movable. As molded, the flap rons attach in the lower position, but the tabs can be trimmed to model them up. Also posable are the leading edge slats. The large engines dominate the flanker's underside. The kit provides the external sections as large single parts. Inside are intake trunks, ramps, optional open or closed suction relief doors, and two-part fan and stator blade assemblies. At the other end are rear fans with separate afterburner assemblies that fit into jet pipes with detailed interiors. Optional nozzle parts allow them to be modeled fully open or narrowed. They can also be posed droop down and in as seen on SU-35s at rest. The cockpit comprises a tub with molded switches and panels on the side consoles. They and the instrument panel look to be a good match for images of the SU-35's controls. Decals provide screens for the multifunction displays as well as detailing many of the controls. The remainder of the cockpit details include a multi-part ejection seat, cockpit walls with molded padding, separate controls, heads-up display parts, and a turtle deck. The gear bays are a highlight with detailed boxes for the nose and main wheel wells. Finely molded wiring and plumbing crisscross the finished bays. The nose gear and main legs are beautifully molded and show minimal mold seams. And the separate tires show tread, sidewall labeling, and subtle bulging. The slotted debris guard for the nose wheels looks terrific. The kit provides a multi-part radar dish for the nose, but there's no provision to pose the radar open. Out of the box, the model can be loaded for air-to-air -air combat with four R-27, four R-73, and four R-77 missiles, as well as wingtip ECM pods. The weapons are molded in single pieces with all of the fins in place. In addition to the two-part canopy, the clear parts provide HUD glass, the infrared sensor lens, and landing lights. As a bonus, in the first 2,999 kits, an extra clear sprue provides gold-tinted canopy parts. A small photo-etched fret has flare dispenser covers and formation or slime lights. There's even a guide to place the ladder on the wings. Decals and color diagrams supply markings for three SU-35s, including stencils for the airframe, pylons, and missiles. There's a lot here, but the molding and engineering are first rate. Yeah, based on what's in the box and with GWH's record, I expect it to produce a nice replica. Mobius Models recently acquired the license to produce kits from the newer Star Trek movies. These are the stories in the so-called Kelvin or alternate timeline that started with J.J. Abrams' 2009 film. Mobius's first kit in this new venture is the 1/350th scale USS Franklin, seen in the most recent film in the franchise, Star Trek Beyond. Starfleet's first Warp 4 ship, it plays a critical role in the story and narrative. After it disappears... Uh, it, uh, spoilers! Spoilers! Oh, sorry, sorry. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's in the movie. It's also in this box, which features a terrific cover painting done by noted Star Trek illustrator John Eaves. The off-white plastic parts have crisp recessed panel lines. The molding of things like strikes on the upper deck, the array around the hull, and the windows looks good. The lower hull incorporates the lower halves of the pylons, which should make for a sturdy vessel. Surface detail is good here, too. Detail on the upper halves of the pylons mirrors the lower sections. A strip of windows fills the space between the hull halves. It comprises multiple sections with deeply recessed openings. 
that are filled from behind by strips of clear plastic inserts. Masking them will be a challenge, but pre-painting the external strip and taping off the ring to paint the rest of the ship might be the ticket. Clear plastic also provides the main bridge window, lights, impulse engines, and both the Boussard collectors and rear caps for the warp nacelles. The nacelles build from three main parts, left and right halves with a separate spine. The Boussard collectors comprise a frame that fits inside the clear dome and two fans that fit behind it between the dome and another clear part inside a front ring. The nacelle rear caps are molded as single pieces with fine ribbing. The balance of the parts are details for the ship and are all sharply molded. A stand with a plaque-like base, a sturdy two-part arm, and a cradle that supports the ship without fitting inside. Which means you can fly it around on occasions without having to wrestle the stand out. Two sets of decals are provided, one faded to show the Franklin as it's found in the movie, the other bright so you can build the ship as factory fresh. The painting instructions give a bunch of hints and tips as to how to finish the Franklin as it's seen in the movie. We'll have to see how this all fits together, but right now this looks like a great freshman Trek kit from Mobius. Sometimes Tamiya releases a new version of an existing kit within a few months or a year. Then there are subjects like the 135th scale Vespa, or Vespa if you prefer, that was first released in 1996. 22 years later, it's back with new parts and decals to market for service in Italy. Officially known as the The vehicle mounted a 10.5 centimeter howitzer on a modified Panzer II chassis. The engine was moved forward in a lengthened hull. More than 600 were built and they served on most German fronts. New parts in this edition include beautifully molded Lincoln length tracks. The original featured vinyl tracks. There are short and long sections to go around the idlers and drive sprockets. And the upper run has sag molded in over the return rollers. The same sprue provides new sprockets an MG42 for the fighting compartment wall with ammo, and various other pieces of equipment including electrical junction boxes. Also new are some nicely molded figures with sharp hands and faces, separate helmets, and, especially nice, separate lapels for a better 3D effect. They are posed as if preparing to load the gun and fire around. Five extra shells and propellant cases are also provided to expand on the four given in the original kit. The other original parts include the running gear and suspension with molded springs, road wheels with inserts to close the open rear faces, return rollers, and idlers. There's the lower hull with detail molded on the belly and sides, and an upper hull with separate driver's hatches, weld seams, and open louvers. The fighting compartment sides and gun shield have thin edges on the plates and detail molded inside. Non-skid diamond plate marks the floor, and there are plenty of tools and other fixtures both in and out of the compartment. The main gun is on full display, and there are many details, including the breech and breech block, recoil sled, recuperator, elevation equipment, and sight. A small decal sheet and marking diagram detail two Wespas, both near Anzio in Italy, 1944. It's great that Tamiya is updating some of its older tooling. The figures and Lincoln length tracks are welcome additions here. Finally, from Hobby Zone, we have a couple of workbench modules that are especially useful. Now, the company's produced some really neat paint racks and storage solutions. But this one's really cool as it's designed to hang on the wall. This paint hanger is built to hold 26 millimeter bottles, the eyedropper kind used by Vallejo and AK Interactive, amongst many others. The shelves are angled so that the bottles are easy to see and remove. Made from sturdy MDF board, the rack can hold up to 55 bottles. Now if you have more room on your bench or would prefer to use the rack that way, HobbyZone has you covered with the paint hanger base. This simple structure glues to the front of the hanger and has room for tools and other stuff. You can also insert magnets to lock it together with other HobbyZone modules. Finally, and this is one I'm kind of excited to use, is the sprue module. The simple open unit comprises 15 slots, sort of like a toast holder, into which you can place part trees, making them easy to find as you are working while keeping them clear of glue spills. But it can also be a great place to keep sandpaper, instructions, and even decals. It's a versatile module that will find a home on my bench. HobbyZone continues to find unique storage solutions. So, Elizabeth, is it okay if I give some spoilers now? Sure. Look for reviews of the Flanker and Franklin in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the May issue, on sale now. We also have a database of thousands of modeling products on our website at finescale.com. While you're there, swing by the Combat Hobby Store for back issues, books, and modeling tools, including Zeron sprue cutters. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Elizabeth Nash, and I enchanted this message. 
Welcome, I'm Elizabeth Nash here with Aaron Skinner for another episode of the New Product Rundown. Find Scale Modeler's twice monthly show to amaze and delight you with a look inside some of the latest kits. And the first of today's delights is delights and delights, delights is GWH's <laughs> 135th scale Sequoia SU 35S. <laughs> this is the ultimate version of the flanker with thrust vectoring for maneuverability, uh, a stealthy airframe, and um, improved targeting. In this multi role aircraft <laughs> entered Russian Air Force Service in 2014. <laughs> GWH has earned a reputation, unlike us, for beautifully molded and engineered kits. I think that was great. 